Okay, let's see if this works. It'll be an interesting experiment. Okay, um, so number three. This x is greater than negative seven. They're basically asking the same question twice. Once for this uh, ordered pair, and again for this ordered pair. What they're asking is, is this a solution? And then they're asking again, is this a solution? That's all it's asking. Okay? So, I'll that out. Um, so if it's a solution, then, then we should be able to take this x and this y, plug it into wh whatever the situation, into an equation or an inequality. But now, Megan's going to point out why this is confusing. Yes? Because there's no place, there's no place to put the y. There's a y of 10, but where do we put the y? Yeah, nowhere. We put it nowhere. The, this inequality has nothing to do with y. Or if it does, we could put plus 0y there and there. Like if we put plus 0y, it doesn't make any difference. Right? So there's a place I could put y, it's just not going to make any difference. I can put it there, it goes away. The thing that really matters is the zero. So the question is, for the first one, is this true? If it's true, it's a solution. If it's false, it's not a solution. It's solution. Is zero greater than negative seven? Yes, it is. So this is a solution. And how about the second one? Not a solution. Not a solution, because negative eight is not greater than negative seven. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we figured it out. Not a solution. Okay. On to number 11. <laughs> the question is graph the inequality in the coordinate plane. Do what? Any x, comma, y, any ordered pair, any combination of numbers that makes this inequality true. We're gonna, instead of writing them all down, we'll graph them, we'll graph all of those possible solutions. Now, it can be equal to, it can be less than, right? Y can be equal to this side, or Y can be less than this side. If I think about the points that make both sides equal, if I think about all those points, and I graph, graph all those points, what kind of a thing will I see over here on the axis if I were to plot all of the points? A line. A line, exactly. If you didn't know that, now you know it. It's very important to know that if I graph all the, if I plot all the points that make both sides of this equal, okay, it's not the same for every single equation on, in the universe, but for this particular equation and for equations like this, okay, equations like this, going to get a line that plot all those points that make both sides equal. Okay? If I plug in 0 for x, I'll get negative 1 for y, which we'll call it, we'll call it y-intercept. 
Uh, next, I'll plug in 1 for x, because what's easier than 1? Well, 0, but we already used it. So we're going to plug in 1 for x. Uh, we're going to go over to x is 1. That's over 1. When I, when I talk about the slope, that's the over 1 part. Right? It's negative 2 over 1. So there's the run of 1 and a slope of 2, or a, a rise of negative 2. Or when I put in 1, I get negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Okay, there's our line. What is this line? <coughs> it's a bunch of points made of an infinite number of points. Yes, my first A. <laughs> uh, Well, we already asked the question in the in number three. Is this a solution? Is this a solution? Is this a solution? What do we do? We plug in the x and the y and see if it's true. Okay, so if I plug in an x and a y, say like 0, 0. 0 for x, 0 for y, is that true? Yeah. Then 0, 0 is a solution. 0 for x and 0 for y is a solution. Okay. 0 for x and 1 for y, is that a solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be negative 5 and less than 30. That's true. So 0, 1 is also a solution. So they're asking. Which of these four choices, A, B, C, or D, is not a solution? So we can just plug them all in, plug them in, plug them in, plug them in. When one of them makes the statement false, then uh, we'll have our answer. So C, if we plug in 1 for x and negative 7 for y, we'll get uh, 35 minus 3, or 35 plus 3. Yeah, 35 plus 3. We got 38, so that's more than 30, that's false. We could also. Graph this real quick. Okay. And I'll graph it quickly. Okay. I'm going to put in 0 for x and figure out what y is. We're about to graph a line, like 3x minus 5y equals 30. I'll just write it as a dotted line. So 0 for x gives me negative 7 for y. Okay. Right Plug in a 0 for y, and I'll get, thank you, I'll get uh, 10 for x. I'll draw this dotted line. Now I have to figure out where to shade. Didn't we find a couple of solutions just a second ago? Mm -hmm. What were those solutions? 
Zero, zero. Zero, zero. One. Well, those points are from up here above the line. So those must be the points that work, mm -hmm. that are solutions to that inequality. So we can just shade that. And now let's look at the points that we have from A, B, C, and D. Uh, well, A is zero, zero. So that, that's, that's good. That's clear. Negative one, seven. Clearly in the shaded area. One, negative seven. If you're paying attention, wait, what's this? One, yeah, negative seven. That's negative seven. If you're paying attention, is the y-intercept. And the line goes up and to the right from there. So it must be below that, and right, below the line, outside of the shaded region. Negative Let's look at the other one just real quick. Negative five, negative five. And negative five, I mean, even if I'm a really bad graph drawer, I can see that that points in the shaded region. Yes? I saw how did you do that? You wrapped it. But I like, I put y equals to the Oh, OK, so you just put it like this little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I subtracted mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay, uh, there we go. So C would be the one uh, possibility lands outside the shaded region, so it's not a solution. Next is number nine in 1.7. Absolute value of x is equal to nine. That this is good. This, this uh, lays out the basics of what, how we should solve these absolute value equations. Okay. So, if I take the absolute value of some number, I get nine. What can I take the absolute value of and get nine? What could this be? Could be nine. It could also be minus nine. In either case, the absolute value of that number is nine. So x can be either of either of those things. X can be this, or x can be this, or x could be equal plus or minus nine. X could be equal nine, comma negative nine. Like we can show what x could be in, in pretty much any way that communicates what x could be. So next, we'll do seven. Oh, graph. well, graph the solution. We're going to need a number line because we're only graphing one variable. So we only need one dimension. So zero. Let's say that's nine. Let's say that's negative. That's it. That's all you have to do. Dot there. Yeah. Dot there. Those are the two values. Oh, well, when I looked in the book, it has like some. Yeah, there's some really stuff. complicated thing. Like, I was like, what is this? And then it's like, ah, yeah. So Random what that's doing, so basically what you're looking at. Yeah. It's saying that's nine. Okay. It's telling you what absolute value means. In oh. that picture there. Okay. It means that whether you're a positive nine or negative nine, your distance from zero is nine. Okay. And that's what absolute value is. Okay. Distance from zero. Mm -hmm. So that you don't need to do all that to graph x is nine or negative nine. Seventeen. Absolute value of n plus nine is equal to ten. There's two possibilities. What could I take the absolute value of and get 10? What could this be? Negative. Could be 10, couldn't it? Oh, yeah. Or it could be negative 10. What I'm saying is the stuff inside of the absolute value could be 10, or the stuff inside of the absolute value could be negative 10. So this is the stuff inside the absolute value. So n plus 9 could be 10. Or n plus 9 could come out to be negative 10. Either way, when I take the absolute value of those things, I'll get 10. Is it? 
Well, yeah, but you have to. I haven't solved it yet. I'm oh, just saying oh. stuff <laughs> inside the action value can be this or it can be the other thing. Oh. And so okay. subtract 9 in this case, Ooh. you get n is 1. Here we get n is negative 19. know each other pretty well now by this time of the year. So if you have more questions about that, stop me, but I'll generally just continue assuming that everything's cool. Okay, so did we have to graph that one or not? Because in the book it well, says... Let's see the, 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 the destruction here says graph. So yeah, we do have to graph it. So here's zero. Here's one. So that's, that's one thing that it can be or it can be. 19, negative 19, it could be that. So you just have to put dots. That's it. Just dots. Because it can't be anything else. It can be just exactly 1 or exactly negative 19. It can't be bigger or smaller than something. It's not an inequality. Okay. There are inequalities later, but this isn't one. Mm -hmm. 22. Absolute value of 3g plus 14 equal to 7. And now we don't have to graph, that's it. You just find the solution and we don't have to graph to see the difference. Again, the stuff inside of the absolute value to get 7 could be 7, or it could be negative 7. Right? The absolute value is negative 7, negative 7. So set the stuff inside the absolute value equal to 7. And the other possibility is all that stuff, whatever it's looking for g, could come out to be negative 7. So we subtract 14, get negative 7. G is negative 7 thirds, or 3G is equal to negative 21 when we subtract 14. So I have 3 and G is negative 7. Yeah. But then do you have to plug it in? It says, oh. It doesn't say check. Uh, the only time you have to check is if there's a, a, a variable that, that you're trying to solve for outside of the absolute value. Whether it be on the same side of the equation, the other side of the equation, if it's not inside the absolute value, that's the thing that's going to mess things up, ruin it for everybody. Possibly. It may be fine. It may cooperate, but it may mess things up. And the only reason that it could get messed up is if you plug it back in and it winds up saying that the absolute value, well, I mean, think about this. Absolute value of x equals negative 5. What are the solutions? Uh, none. There are no solutions. You cannot solution this because <laughs> <laughs> there's it's not no solutable. way for the absolute value of something to be negative. Okay. Uh, <coughs> 31. Absolute value of 1 half y. Plus four. Okay, what? A brass concert. Is some kind of lion? What? You made it back here? Yeah, they, it was only like after a long brass concert. Okay. And I got my backpack. Get back. <laughs> By the way, say brass. Concert. Where was it? It was a brass trio. There was a French horn, a trumpet, and a trombone. This is one. Okay, so again, the stuff inside of the absolute value could be equal to 6, because the absolute value of 6 is 6. Or the absolute value, or the, the stuff inside of the absolute value could be negative 6, because the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So this stuff could come out to be 6. It could instead, or the 1 half y plus 4 could be negative 6. So we'll just solve for x, or y. So 1 half y equals 2, y equals 4. If we multiply by 2 on both sides, we multiply by 1 half. Yeah, because it's a fraction. Like there's, um, did you get 1? Reciprocal 1 half is 2. 1 half y in this case equals negative 10, so y equals negative 20 when we multiply by 2. Uh, inequality. Gotta use our 
I'm thinking muscles. I'm not for too long, don't worry. Okay. So some number, when I take the absolute value of that number, needs to be less than seven. Here, let's start with the obvious. If this If this stuff comes out to be less than or equal to 7, then the absolute value of that will be less than 7, right? Less than or equal to 7. If I plug in a y and I get 7, that works. If I plug in a y and I get 6, that works. If I plug in a, a y that winds up giving me 0, that will work. Okay? But with the absolute value, I'm going to think about this for a second. Uh, I can take the absolute value of this stuff and come out less than seven. So, you know, seven, or six, or five, or four, or three, or two, or one, or zero, right? All those work. But I don't want to go too far. What about if I go negative eight? Is the absolute value of negative eight less than seven? No, it's not equal to seven either, right? So this number also has to be Something about negative seven, right? Some kind of a the absolute value. The, the, like the farthest down I could go is negative seven, right? Once I get, um, these numbers are to the left of seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Even negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, all work. But negative eight, no good. See what I'm saying? So. If this stuff is going to be less than seven, then, or the absolute value is going to be less than seven, then this stuff has to be less than seven. It also has to be bigger than or equal to negative seven. Right? It's going to be those. You can say that. I'm very good at this. Then we just solve. Four y is less than or equal to six. Y is less than or equal to 4. Okay. And uh, Y, 4Y, is greater than or equal to, so I add 9 and I get 2. You can do 2. Okay. <laughs> 16. <laughs> you said it's the yeah. <laughs> So as long as Y is less than or equal to 4, and greater than or equal to one half? Can it be both of those things? Yeah, yeah I can be bigger. So we could actually write it like this. Y needs to be bigger than or equal to one half and less than or equal to four. And then to graph it, we just graphed these before, right? I don't remember a line. Uh, there's four. It could be equal to four. Here, let's call it zero. That's two, one, three. There's one half right there. It could be one half. Or anything else. Okay. okay. Similar thing here, but a little bit different because we'll find that it can't be in between two values. That's going to be different. So, obviously, if this stuff, whenever I plug in Z, comes out to be uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, then anything bigger than 14, then we'll be good, right? But then there's this absolute value thing, right? If I take the absolute value of some negative numbers to become positive, and that could possibly come out to be bigger than 14, right? Because if I take the absolute value of negative 15, that's going to be bigger than 14. So that stuff could come out to be negative 15, and that would work. Right? But if it became out to be negative 16, yeah? Negative 17, negative 18, right? So I can just go forever in that direction. So what would I say about 5z plus 1? It needs to be less than 14. Negative 14? Negative. 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 That's so if this stuff is bigger than 14, then the, the absolute value of that thing will be bigger than 14. If this thing is less than negative 14, like negative 14 and a half, negative 15, negative 16, negative 32, 
any of those numbers that are to the left of negative 14, you take the absolute value of that and you'll come out to be bigger than 14. And then you just solve A. Or, because it can't be both of these things. It can't be less than this thing over here and more than this thing over to the right. So just say it's the uh, y z n15 and z is less than infinity. Here we graph it. Uh, here, 0, 1, 2, 3, plus negative 3. So it cannot be negative 3, but it can be less than that. No, 13 right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, here's 5 fifths. This is how I always do when I graph it. 5 fifths. How many fifths is this? 10 fifths. How many is this? 15 fifths. So it's between here. It's 10 and 3 more. So it's like right, a little bit bigger than half. That's right, there's 13 fifths. Can't be 13 fifths, but it can be bigger than 13 fifths. Nobody asked about if you have to check your solutions. Question? Yeah. Did you figure this out? You good? Yeah. Okay. So on the 5z plus 1 is less than negative 14. Mm -hmm. Why does the sign get switched around from the other one? Because it's not so much switched like when we divide by a negative or something. It's just that this stuff is what makes the inside, no, the number inside of the absolute value, right? That's the stuff that makes the number inside the absolute value. Okay. So that stuff could come out to be bigger than 14. Right? It could just be a number that's bigger than 14, and that would make sense. But we also, when we take absolute values of negative numbers, we get positive numbers. So if this wound up being negative 16, or negative 15, or neg is this making sense? Yeah. Or negative 18, or negative 20. When I take the absolute value of that, I'm going to get 20. Is bigger than 14, that's true. Absolute value of negative 18 is 18, which is bigger than 14. Negative 15 is in there. Then absolute value of negative 15 is 15, and that's bigger than 14. All these numbers I'm talking about, these are all numbers that are to the left of negative 14. Right? The numbers that will work will be bigger than 14, or numbers that are negative 15, negative 16, negative 17, negative 18, negative 1,000, negative a million, negative all those numbers that are to the left of negative 14. So this stuff inside the absolute value could be any number that's less than negative 14. Right? Okay. This stuff could be negative 15, negative 16, negative 20, negative 1,000. Like any of those numbers will work. And when I take the absolute value of that stuff, then I'll get 15. 15 is bigger than 14. Absolute value 16, 16 is bigger than 14. Absolute value negative 20, 20 is bigger than 14. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Do you not have any trouble checking our answers? What is it 34, check your answers. Yeah. What'd you get? Solution. Two, uh, 34, they both just work. Let's take a 35. That doesn't bother me. 34, you should get 1 and 2, and then it's over 4. It's my stomach, guys. <laughs> it was really hard.
same as what we do with numbers. We set it equal to 10, and negative 10, 5, and negative 5, 12, and negative 12. Positive, negative 7x, and negative, negative 7x. Okay. I thought you said that was the x equivalent of 7 Yeah, x is like, what's x? x could be negative itself, and then it's Thanks for asking that question. Because I was wondering the same thing. Because it's like equal to the absolute value. Thanks for asking that question. Things. And thanks for thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, 8x equals negative 24. x equals negative 3. 6x equals 24. x equals 4. Maybe they both work. Maybe one of them works. Maybe neither of them works. Right? It's possible to have no solution. I'll just save you the suspense. Negative 3 is going to work, and I'll show you why 4 doesn't work. Or can somebody tell me why 4 doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's positive or it's positive? Because, because, actually, because this is positive. And you can't uh, multiply negative 7 by 4 to get a uh, to get a positive number, That's you have to have negative anti participation. Yes. To get a positive number over there, you need x to be negative. Yeah. Okay. So only negative values for x will work. If this is positive, what happens? We get negative seven times four on the right side. That's negative twenty-eight. Can the absolute value of something be negative twenty-eight? No. 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 So it's the right side. Or the other side, the side it's opposite the absolute value can be negative. We know that's impossible. So we reject that possibility. Always test all your possible solutions because you might get no solution. They both, maybe both of them don't work. Yes. So you can tell just by looking at it if it works or not, like if it's negative. If you can, if you can look at this and then see if it makes the other side come out negative, then you know negative. that it's not possible. Okay. As long as this comes out positive, you're good. It will work. It will definitely work as long as that other side comes out positive. Well, if neither of them work, then what is what is that saying? No solution. No solution. It just means there's no solution. It's not possible for this thing to be solution. Right? Solution. <laughs> you can't find a value of x that you you put on the right side and the left side, and when we take the absolute value, you get a positive number because well, the side always needs to be negative. If there is any way for this to be equal to negative seven x or for it to be equal to positive seven x, we, we find all the possibilities. And in some other equation, if it turns out there is no value of x that won't make this side positive, and that both of them makes this side negative, and it happens, uh, then there's no way to, to solve this equation. We can't. We can just say no solution. Um,
Oh, right. Yeah, we <laughs> <did>. <laughs> from this line, right, where if it's here, if it's here, whatever, we take a point from that line and we put that x and y in here, what will we have on both sides? Oh, they'll be easy. They'll be, do we want them to be equal? Yeah. 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 No. 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 We no. Don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no. We don't want them to be equal. We want them to be unequal. So we don't want those points on that line to be quite dotted, yeah? So if I test you only had a pen, you accidentally did it in uh, like a solid line, and then you just right next to it like did a dotted line, and then said it should be a dotted line. You're good. I You're good. That you had made that mistake. Okay. Or I've, I've had people draw a line and be like, oh no, and go like this. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever. I mean, if I can tell that you were trying to make it dotted, but if you made it solid and then you made it dotted and then you realize it was supposed to be solid, now you're in real trouble. Oh. Maybe maybe it's like a little note that says for sure what I'm supposed to interpret that as. Okay, so this is a line. We want to graph that line. We'll just graph it as a dotted line. So uh, y intercept of 3. There we go. I'll even put an open circle. I'm not going to care if you put an open or a closed circle. Dotted line is enough. Okay. I'm going to do it. Up 3 over 1. That's my slope. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't want the points in that line because the points in the line, when you put them that x in that line, you get equals on both sides. We don't want them to be equal. Uh, be unequal. If I choose any x, this will be the y that I get. This x, I get this y. This x, I get this y. This y. Okay. Well, I don't want that y because that y makes it equal. I want a y that makes this side smaller. And where will I find those smaller y's? Y's that are smaller than the y's on the line. Below that y is vertical, the smaller numbers are down. One of five. Shit, give me five. No, you got five and five. You did good on that. What? Don't like that. Scale. Okay. Scale. 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 solve the equation, that means that when we take the absolute value of the stuff, we get 21. If this comes out to be 21, the absolute value will be 21. If this comes out to be negative 21, we'll get the absolute value of that is also 21. So those are the two possibilities. Are we going to need to check our solutions? Mm -hmm. No. How do we know that we don't? Not a variable. Not in the... And it doesn't say Check for There's there's not anything, not any variables on the outside of the absolute value side. And then what? And it doesn't say. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Does your car tell you everything it's supposed to do? No, but I mean, does it have instructions that say turn this way to go left and turn this way? My car is not. You know what you're supposed to do. Some people like need that though. My car is not. You shouldn't be driving. That's very dangerous. Yeah. Oh, there's a deer. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. My car is Night Rider. It has all that stuff. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but I don't want me. to drive on the road with people who don't have Night Rider and don't know how to turn their wheel. Okay, so we got negative two K is fifteen and K is negative five. And let's see, twenty-seven equals three K. K equals nine. No need to check the answer because there's no no uh, variables outside of the absolute value. If you go faster than I was supposed to, and you need to ask another question, then just stop. But, uh, I'll keep going unless you stop. If these two things are identical, as long as this comes out to be positive, then good. If these two things come out to be opposite of each other. As long as this is a positive number, right, and this is the opposite of whatever that positive number is, I'm just going to take the absolute value of that, and I'm going to come out with that positive number. So it works out. Okay, so we always just take the absolute value equals the thing, and equals the opposite of the thing. Right? Does that make sense? It would be a number, an expression, with a variable in it. Are we going to need to check our solutions? Yes, it says so. Mm -hmm. And also, because there's a, a variable outside of the absolute value that could mess things up, could make us have an absolute value equals negative. So now we have x equals 10, x equals 5. All right? No, not right. Subtract 2, that's a negative 12. So negative 14. So x is. Oh, I had it. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 don't get all upset. Hold on. x could be negative 14. Okay? Yeah. Subtract two x from both sides, you get x. Subtract two for both yeah. sides, you get x. Okay, great. Now we're going to distri distribute the negative. Negative two x plus 12. Okay. Five x equals 10. Now that 12 is positive. And x equals two. Seems good, like we got a positive one and we got a negative solution. Seems like maybe one will work and one won't, but let's see what happens. We plug a negative in here, that's going to be very, very negative. 2 times negative 14, that's negative 28 minus 12. But it doesn't really matter what that number is, because it's a negative number. And we can't take the absolute value and wind up with a negative, which we will get if we plug a negative 14. So that's out. That doesn't work. Great positive 2, but that's only a positive 4 here. Subtract so 12 from positive 4, still in the negatives. So this doesn't work either. What do we say about this equation? No, it's so no. That was a really lucky guess for me. Because I just did negative so 14. I didn't like have enough time. So and I just got negative 14 and I plugged it back in. And I was like, that doesn't work. But I didn't have enough time to like do the second part of it. So I was like, no solution. <laughs> yeah. So if they just went as far as finding negative 14. And they didn't. I mean, there should be like maybe an X through them or circling yeah, them. Or or it was like you know, it looks like they either didn't do it or didn't have time to check Me the solution. Me too. So that would be like I didn't forget. See, I started, but I just didn't have enough time. I remember that. What do we remember about function notation? Just a Anybody remember anything about function notation? It sounds familiar. I bet if you write it on the board, yeah, I'll get it. Okay. Let me show you not function notation. Let me okay. just show you a function, okay. and then I'll change it to function notation. Here's a function. Wait, is it the f of yes. x? That's, that's it. That's function that's notation. It. Oh, I thought so that was here function. is a world before function notation. I'm just making up a function here. 2x plus 3. There's a function. Right, what's a function? Just real quick. Equals 
input output. 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 So here is a, is a function, it's just not using function notation. Here's why we would want to use function notation. Let's say there's a function here, and here's a function. Uh, 1 half x minus 2, here's another function. Negative 4 sevenths x plus 9. These are all functions because I can put something in and get something out. And even more importantly, I can put something in. When I put something in, only one thing comes out. That's the key other part of the function. When I put in 2, I don't get out 7 and 12. I'm only get 2 things. So here's the first thing about function notation to really quickly remind you. If I say plug in 3 for x, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> plug in 3 for x. What do you do? Oh, so yeah. Any questions about that? No. About my instructions? I got that. So what are you going to do? You're going to make x 3 and solve, and and solve for y. Solve okay. for y. Yeah. Okay, what if I say plug in 3 for x in the function? Say the word the. Into the function. Plug three into the function. There's no question there? Plug in three into the function. Yeah, then you're like, what do Wait, I, where do I put it? In the y or the x? Put it in for x. Put it in for x in the function. Do I have any questions about that? Should I have questions about that? <laughs> That's my question. I would. Where do you put it? Is it Oops, sorry. Uh, what if I said, uh, uh, what does that mean? Well, if I said go <laughs> over, I'm trying to find something that has, there's like multiple things in it. Uh, go back there and, and bring me the chair. Or bring me the chair. What so like what function? No, no, which, yeah, what which one is the question? Chair? Which chair, which function? Oh, oh, because there's, the there's, there's, uh, uh, there's three oh, functions. Yeah. I thought you just meant, I thought you were talking about one. Yeah, I was talking about one. Oh, you thought you were just talking about this one? Yeah, yeah. 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 I never said that, right? Yeah. So that's the thing about functions. Yeah. It, it gives, the function notation gives them yeah. names. Okay, here are the names that we'll give them. Yeah. F for what? Function. function, and then G for that's the letter after Y, and then H for that's the letter after G, and then uh, if it's a, if there's another function, we don't usually go to I. There we go. The next one would probably be K of X, M of X, N of X. Yeah. We we name them uh, for different situations. Like there are these things called rational functions. It's just a function divided by another function. So when in that situation we'll call it, well we'll just say the function n or the function uh, d. What do you think I call this function n? Numerator denominator function, right? And when I divide them, I call this q. Why do I call that q? Because that's the quotient. The quotient of the two functions. Yes. Exactly. So we give them names based on the situation, right? If we, if the function gives me uh, the, the numerator the denominator, if it gives me uh, a, a position, or if it gives me a height, or if it gives me a volume, I might give them the names like H for B, or A for area, whatever. Whatever fits the situation, or I don't even have to worry about it, I just call it time. That's pretty standard. All right, well, while we're just messing up everything and, and changing it from Y to F and G and H, also put of x, of x. I'm going to change this x to uh, t, because it fits my fancy. That's what I want it to be. This. <laughs> h of what do you think? T. t. H of t. H of T, it's the T is what? I'm trying to find T usually. This function, what are functions? Input output. Input output. So what's T in that situation? The input. The input. T is the input. 
Here x is the input, here x is the input, here t is the input, some other function s could be the input, b could be the input, whatever the input is called, that's what you'll see inside the parentheses. Okay? Very important. This is not multiplication. Not multiplication. It just means this is the name of the function. kind of like the name of the input, so the input is called. I say f, what does that tell you? Talking about f. Not talking about g, not talking about h. Talking about f. The other name. Of 4, does that mean f times 4? No. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The f is a function. f is this whole thing. That is what f is. That is the definition of a f. Okay. So if I say 4 times f, I could multiply a function by 4, but that's just kind of not like something to do with functions today. What this means is 4 is the input. 4 is the input where? On the other side of the equal sign for f, right? Not g and not h. So this tells me a lot of stuff with very few pen strokes. A mathematician is a, is a thing that likes to use as little ink as possible. So this saves us a lot of ink. Instead of saying plug 4 into x in the function on the far left, right? Instead of on the far left, I call it f. Instead of telling you all that plug in 4 for x, I just put parentheses 4. So you have now no 4 in the input. So 2 times 4. 3 equals 8 plus 3 is right. Duh. That's what f of 4 is. f of 4 is 11. Hopefully I don't see you guys doing this, kind of like forgetting what we talked about today, uh, and, and, and not, yeah, dividing by 4 trying to figure out what f is. No. Just f by itself doesn't quite make a lot of sense. f of x, well that's this function. f of 4, well that's the output when I put 4 in. Well the output is 11. And if I divide by 4, I'm kind of saying like f, the function f is 11 over 4. It's not the function f is 2x plus 3. So can we quickly find h of 21? Can we do that real quick? Okay. First hurdle is what does that even mean? Plug it in 21 for t. Plug it in 21 for t. And h is the only one that has to be it. Uh, negative 4 over 7 times 21 over 1 plus 9. Uh, so we got a 3 there. Okay, so this is a 3 now. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Plus 9, negative 3. What's negative 3? That's h of 21 is negative 3. Negative 3 is the output of h. Function h has an output of 21 of negative 3 when you plug in 21. We good? Yeah. Function notation. Gives it a name, makes telling you what to do with that function very simple. Uh, one last thing. What if I said g of x equals uh, 6? What does that mean? S equals six. Six. Does x equal 6? No. No, no because that, that would be in the parentheses. So it would be 6 equals half x. Yes. 6 is not the input. It's the output. It's the output. 6 is what I got when I put something in for x. What is x? Well, set 1 half x minus 2, because that's g, equal to 6, and solve for, g, we'll solve for x, and you'll know what the input was. Oh, OK. G of x is 6 and g of 6. G of 6 is put 6 in for x. G of x is 6. 6 is y. Yeah. Six actually is 6. So it would be 6 over 1 half. Yes. Let's say 6 is g of x. You see how g of x is 6. G of x can be replaced with 6. 1 half x minus 2 is called for x. A to 16. 
Yes. So whenever you write the answer, do you have to put the name in the input? Say it again. Well, like for each um, 21, it yeah. goes near 3. Do yeah. you always have to put the H in the 21? If you don't, then the, the significance of negative 3 is lost. Right? <laughs> so it's, I don't know, it's kind of like having a trophy with no plaque on it. You got the trophy with support. That doesn't say. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is negative 3? Well, it is the, the result of having put 21 in for x, or t, in h. Um, and, and think about it like this is just another way of writing. This is the input, this is the output. We could put x and h of x, right? This is the input, this represents the output. And I could put 21, or sorry, t, not x. t and h of t. If t is 21, then h of 21, if I put 21 in there, I'll get negative. That's just another way of saying that. Okay, piecewise functions. Piecewise defined functions. Piecewise defined functions. How do you think these functions are defined? By pieces. By pieces. Okay. Exactly right. It's kind of like to draw an analogy. Well, not an analogy, just another way to represent piecewise functions. If I want to cut it into pieces, the pieces I'm talking about are like the x values. I will cut this function into pieces like this. Uh, let's say we'll use a certain function over here, and then we'll use another function here, and we'll use another function for x's that are bigger than that. Right? So if I, if I were to pick some specific values, this could be like where uh, x is equal to negative 3. This could be x is equal to 2. Right? So those could be. Well, this would be where x is less than or equal to 3. I can include the 3 in that. Oh, sorry, negative 3. This would be where x is uh, bigger than 3, neg or sorry, negative 3, not equal to, because this part gets to be equal to. And it's less than, let's say less than or equal to 2. I could put less than or equal to, or less than, it doesn't matter. But only one of these, these uh, pieces can include the actual value. And x is greater than oh, yeah. 2. Or t, 2 is less than x. So that, when I say pieces, I go to the pieces and cut into pieces. It could be two pieces, three pieces, four pieces. Five. What you wind up with a piecewise function you graph it is three different graphs. These graphs could go together nicely. You could actually have three different functions just connect together and make one nice graph like that. Or there could be one function that looks like this right here, but it stops there, but it's included at negative three because it's equal to, so we'll put a closed circle. Then this other one might look like this. And we'll include two on this one, a closed circle. And this other one might actually land, it's like it's open circle in right on top of this closed circle, and then goes like that. That could be a graph of a piecewise defined function. Well, sorry, easier piecewise functions than that. Yeah, that's crazy. This could be like a, 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 an x squared function. This could be an x to the fourth function. This could be like just a line. What are we doing? Hold on. Real quick. If f of x is equal to, I'm just making this up, so don't worry that you don't understand where this is coming from, just making it up. Uh, 4 sevenths x plus 5. Okay. This is a function I'll use sometime, some part of the time, for some piece of the, the graph, or some piece of the x's, right? And I'll use this one the other time. This was just kind of a two piece rather than three pieces like this graph that I showed you. How do I know? Well, whoever writes down the problem needs to tell you that. We're going to use this one, this little thing means like if, if x say is bigger than 5. Right? If x is bigger than 5, we use this function. If x is less than or equal to 5, we use this function. Does it make sense? 
If I want to plug an x in, first I have to look here to see which, where my x lies and which function I'll use. So, f of 0. How am I going to find f of 0? That means plug 0 in for x, right? But which function? So, so, so. The top one, because 0 is less than 5, so I want to use this one. Right? So that's going to be 1 half times 0 minus 3. What about f of 10? Which function will I use then? The bottom function. I'll use the bottom function. Okay. What about f of 5? Top, uh, because that includes 5. Okay. Remember, this means plug this in for the input. If I want to know which one to use, and you think, okay, that's the input. Which of these includes my x that I know that's plug in? Well, this one does, in this case, for 5. It's, it, x is equal to 5, so I use this function. F is greater, or x is equal. X is greater than 5. So, since x is greater than 5, 10 is greater than 5, I will plug 10 into this function. And since here, x is less than 5, I'll use this function, plug in 0 to the x under that function. Okay. So that's it for